Hey guys, uh, Brian here from uh, Random Rooster Farm, and I'm going to talk about Beatles. Not the famous band from Liverpool, but uh, copper and green iridescent um, beetle that's originally from Japan. And I got a few here on my beans. I'm going to show you. Might have been kind of hard to see, but they're uh, almost half inch long, copper and green. They seem to kind of change color as you look at them. But they've got a huge appetite and they've been a, a real problem this year. Um, they're not new to the area. They've been around, I believe, like the early 1900s. They it came in as, as a nursery, in a nursery stock in their larva state. Their larva state is what we know as uh, the grub that will find uh, you know wreaking havoc to our lawns in probably September that's where they'll uh, they eat the root system of your grass where you end up you could pull it up like a carpet and uh, ends up killing your grass so uh, they've had a real destructive round in the adult stage that we're uh, yet to see what damage uh, they really can do um, you kind of see there in the beans all the little holes. I actually had a couple different beetles causing trouble, but uh, they were part of the problem. But uh, usually the calling card is a leaf that's kind of lacy looking like this. Uh, typically they're pretty systematic. They'll start at the top of the tree and work their way down, and they're very quick. And uh, you know you see they leave the veins there on the leaf. Um, you know, if, if there's a lot of them, they get real crazy. I'm going to take you over to my uh, apple orchard where, uh, I mean, they strip the leaves there. All right, over here, kind of see my apple orchard. Planted about 13 trees this year. Uh, Red Delicious, Macintosh, Yellow Delicious, Fuji, and there was another one. I forgot. But um, you can see um, how they just left the main vein on this one, or actually all these over here. They got very aggressive, and uh, I was constantly hand-picking them off and smashing them and doing everything I could to protect them since they were new, but we're starting to get some new growth now, so she's doing okay. What seems to be the best control is to do a, uh, a grub treatment in your lawn. Uh, usually do that about May. And uh, I use a, uh, it's a Merit 1400 from uh, Lesco. Uh, the reason I do that, you know, to keep the grubs down, which minimizes the adult Japanese beetles, but also in the winter time, uh, moles will come in the yard and look for grubs and destroy your lawn uh, in the winter time and then you have all those mole hills trip hazards and uh, just makes a mess in your lawn so that, that's why I use that if if you didn't do that and you start to see damage in September you can use a, a, a Dilox I believe it is uh, very expensive but it, it will kill kill the grubs then um, you know once I see them in the adult stage um, Kind of one of my go-to insecticides is the neem. I like it because uh, it's a fungicide and a miticide, and you can use it as a kind of a pre-treatment, and it's organic. So you know, if you do have to use something, you know that this is the way to go. Um, you know, if it gets really bad, like you know, I showed you with apple trees. You know, I had to kick it up a notch. I tried to avoid this, but. Um, actually used uh, seven for that you know just because they were new trees and I didn't want to lose them and I wouldn't get no fruit off them this year so I wasn't concerned about the insecticides but um, you know these beetles will uh, destroy um, you know your trees roses uh, your beans 
uh, you know, if left to themselves, and then, you know, when they lay their grubs, you know, you're going to have a whole mess in your lawn, and, uh, and I, I think the worst part of that is the moles in the winter just devastates the lawn, and uh, so that, that's how you can help uh, manage uh, these Japanese beetles that are, you know, really uh, been a pain the last few years. So uh, thanks for watching.